Welcome back, Big Skillet here. We got some exciting news. They just released the announcement for the update for the capital ships. So uh, very excited about that. They're calling it the Escalation Update Overview, which launches on November 3rd. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, the Escalation Update. Here's the overview. It's gonna be, I believe it's this Wednesday, November 3rd, just pretty much what I thought would be. It goes into, you know, basically thanking all the, the pilots in, you know, in New Eating for helping Concord uh, succeed in destroying the gravitational structures, connecting the void space, yada, yada. That's, that's all good. Uh, capital ships with this, oops, I scrolled a little too high. Capital ships with this update, eight capital ships will make their debut. Four dreadnoughts, four carriers from the four major factions. Uh, the Dreadnoughts do, do not possess strong firepower by default, uh, but their DPS is greatly increased after utilizing the showdown mode, which grants them unrivaled firepower throughout New Eden. Apart from boosting the Dreadnoughts DPS, showdown mode also brings bon bonuses to other aspects, such as repairs and so on and so forth. However, showdown mode is, when, is not without its disadvantages. It dr dramatically reduces the Dreadnought's velocity as well as preventing it from warping. So definitely understanding when the time and place is to activate this is crucial. If you go into shutdown mode too soon, then you're not going to be able to warp. You're stuck for, I think, two or three minutes, and then you're in a world of hurt if you don't have the, the proper support. Uh, the four Dreadnoughts will be named the Revelation for Amar, the Phoenix for Kaldari, the Moros is Galante, and the Nagalfar is Mimitar. So for the carriers, carriers attack uh, a slight, is a lot different than the Dreadnoughts. They use the onboard fighters. Fighters are devastating to regular ships, and they're telling you right here. And they have uh, apparently another class of fighter, which I hadn't seen before. Is, it's called a space superiority fighters, are highly effective against drones, frigates, and destroyers, whereas light fighters are best used, used against cruisers, battle cruisers, and battleships. And there also is another class of fighter, which is a, a Templar, which appears to be a bigger fighter, and they don't really mention that here, so I'm not really sure how that fits in. To add to their threat against regular sh ships, carriers are also equipped with a networked sensor mode, which in can increase their scan resolution significantly. So far in the test up to this point, it's been a 500% increase to the scan resolution. I'm curious to see if they'll keep that. Maybe they'll make it more, make it less. We'll see. And the four factions are releasing the Archon, which is Amar, the Chimera, which is Kaldari, Thanatos is Galante, and the Nidhogger is Mimitar. And the Mimitar one is the one I'm going for. Uh, I'm very you know, excited for that to, to be available. Now, there are capital ship tonnage restrictions. Capital ships cannot enter high sec regions regardless of the means, uh, nor can they dock at capsular, capsular outposts or be trans, transported using the delivery service. The maximum insurance coverage for capital ships is 20% of the estimated value, whereas 70% of regular ships. Um, that's scary. That's going to... If, if, they're, if what they're saying, if, if I'm interpreting it this way, that means that when you lose a ship, you're going to be on the hook for 80% of it, which is interesting. So uh, we'll see. You know, the, the insurance covers 70%. This one is only going to cover 20%. That's the way I read it. So, okay. Okay. Um, We'll see. I can't wait to see one and, and see exactly what that means. It sounds like you're, it's going to require a lot more S, uh, insurance points to recover a carrier if it's destroyed. That's the way I read it. Um, remains to be seen. Uh, put your, post in the comments below if you're interpre interpreting that differently. Um, the capital mod modules, you know, they're going to introduce a wide range of capital ship modules. Basically, it, it appears that anything that has a small, medium, large is also going to have a capital size. Um, turrets, missile launchers, 
Uh, obviously, the fighters are going to be new. Shield recharges, armor, anything like that. It appears that if there's a small, medium, or large, you can pretty much count on that they're going to be a capital size to go with it. Uh, as far as the rigging, it's going to be somewhat similar. Uh, not really the small, medium, or large, but weapon upgrades, defense upgrades, propulsion engineering, whatnot. There are going to be capital size for that. And they're also letting you know that different capital mods and or rigs cannot be fitted to regular ships and vice versa. And it does say most types of capital modules. So I, I'm not sure what, you know, they're leaving some room that there's possibilities, but let's just assume you can't for now. And then one of the biggest things that they haven't really talked about or wasn't part of any testing is the sinosaurus jumps. And this is how capital ships get around New Eden, right? It is through these sinosaurus field generators. And it's a module that can be fitted to ships. It typically was a high slot, and yep, it says here is a high slot module, and it only can only be fitted when you have the required bonus, which leads me to believe that they're either going to introduce a new ship, which it doesn't sound like so far, or they're going to add some roll bonuses to ships that may, because I don't think there's any ships in the game right now that list this bonus. So I'm curious to see how they're going to do that. Um, in order to use that module, you do have to have fuel. Um, in EVE Online, they typically use liquid ozone, seemed to be the cheapest, and it was about 500 liquid ozone per to launch one Sinosaurus field. And as I recall, it lasted about three minutes, I think, one to three minutes. So I'm curious to see how long the activation time is going to be for Echoes. Um, and essentially how it works is you essentially activate the module and you now become the beacon that can be searched by other pilots in the same fleet. Now, in Evil Line, on the map, you can search specifically for Sinosaurus fields that have been generated or lit up throughout New Eden. And you can see regardless of whether you're in a fleet or not. So I don't know if this is going to be limited to where only fleet members can see this. We shall see. Ships fitted with a jump drive when requirements are met, these ships can jump directly to the location of the beacon, i.e. you'll be able to jump directly to the ship that's lit up the Sinosaurus field. Now, there's add-on structures for the Corporation Citadels, and there's two of them. One is a Sinosaurus beacon tower, and basically this acts as the Sinosaurus field generator, but it's a stationary object versus, you know, obviously a player can go, you know, system to system. So this is going to be a beacon that's going to be on the top, uh, on the Corporation Citadel that if you're within jump range, you can jump right to your Corporation Citadel. And then it sounds like you can dock, right? If you can't dock in player outpost, it looks like you're going to be able to dock in the Corporation Citadels. Now, then we also have... Uh, a Sinosaurus Jammer Tower. And this is, once again, an add-on structure to a Corporation Citadel. And once activation, all pilots in the same system will be unable to activate Sinosaurus field generators. Now, the Jammer Tower does not affect the function of the Sinosaurus Beacon Tower for the same corporation. So, what that's saying is, essentially, you won't be able to light up any Sinosaurus field generators in system when this thing is on and activated, which is basically a safety measure that's going to prevent enemies from, you know, hot dropping or, or jumping in with their capital ships on top of you. And here's a really, really good one is the new capital ship rally point. The capital ship rally point is a type of cosmic anomaly. Only null sex systems that have an anchored pirate detection array spawn this type of cosmic anomaly, and the capital ship rally point contain capital, uh, pirate capital ships. So when destroyed, the pirate capital ships will drop the cap, capital modules and capital ship debris. So basically, this is you know how you're going to be able to, I don't really like to use the word farm, but that's kind of what you're doing since you can self-generate these anomalies. That's how you're going to be able to get the uh, the debris and the mods you're going to need for your for capital ships. So... You know, this is very exciting. Uh, I've been waiting for this for, for 14 months now, and I'm super, super pumped that it's here. We've been testing it for a few weeks now, and 
in a five or six days, we're going to be able to have some fun and start building these things. Now, I'm a little concerned personally because I plan on building it in high sec with the, you know, the idea that you can, you know, I would jump into to null sec and be with the crew. It doesn't sound like you can. So it sounds like I'll have to transport my stuff around, which is going to stink because the amount of space it takes to, you know, to transport these things. So we'll see. Well, tell me what you think in the comments below. Are you excited about it? Are you uh, dreading them? No pun intended. Well, maybe a little pun. Um, I'm, I'm stoked. This is what I've been waiting for. Like I said, you know, for 14 months, I think it's great for the game. Um, do they have a specific purpose? Yeah, not really. Like we don't need them to take out structures, things like that based on the way the mechanics in the game work. But just like everybody else, everybody wants the next new shiny toy. I'm no different. You're no different. Everybody wants the next best thing, uh, at least that they, they can afford to, to obtain. So why not? Bigger is bigger, better. Yeah, it's all it's all perspective, right? But I'm excited that they're here. Uh, I hope you are too. It's it's the next evolution of the game. It is a game changer. I think it's going to change a lot of the tactics that we've seen in the last you know few months with drones being the meta. I think that goes away personally. Um, these fighters, especially the light the light fighters, are amazing. Uh, I'm going to have another video coming out in a couple days where uh, I show how how easily the light fighters take out scepters um, and I'll show how they take out drones. Like I, I think that meta is over. I think it's definitely going to shift where it's going to go from here. It's hard to say, um, but I definitely believe it's going to, it's going to include carriers and dreads. So, you know, if you like videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel and ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I release my next video. And if you like this video, smash that like button. And until then, Fly dangerously.